Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester. We are still in Chapter 2, Standards of e and &E, and getting into the next topic that is 2.2 ISO 26262. And as a part of this, we do have a lot of topics to be covered right from 2.2.1 to 2.2.5. But as a part of this tutorial, we are getting started with 2.2.1, Functional Safety and Safety Culture. To begin with, as a part of the functional safety and safety culture, the very first thing we are trying to understand is from the point of objective of functional safety and the e, &E system. So generally, when it happens to be the most important thing, that what exactly is the safety concerns? So when it comes to uh, the automotive industries, it might take a lot of, uh, you know, effort in order to make sure that we are following strict standards uh, in point of making sure that everything is as per the expectation and does not fail at any point of time. Because when you talk about the complexity, because everything begins from the complex features. So the functional and technical complexities of the embedded system is constantly arising. Why? Because the expectations of the customers are reaching high. People want all the features in their uh, automotive when they make use of it. They want to be as comfortable as possible. And when they want ease of access, user friendliness, and as many options as possible, then definitely making that possible or you know, making that happen requires a lot of extra things to be done. And that extra things basically becomes more challenging and complex enough to develop. So at the same time, no matter when you're trying to fulfill these things, the software based on electrical and electronic systems allow new complex functionalities, such as the automation of driving functional in the car. That means, you know, you talk about moving a car automatically based on the sensors which you have on your streets or probably the roads marking. So that lets you drive a very safe journey. So, you know, due to this high complexity, the risk of an erroneous action happening during the development is increasing, right? Because when you have high complexity, of course, chances of going wrong is equally high. So it's directly proportional. The consequences can be non-detected as well, like false state in the system. So if it goes into like an uh, unidentifiable zoo, that results into obviously the potential fatal death or probably the loss of life or probably in you know some part of the body uh, failure as well that means you you come across an accident and probably you lose one of your limb or probably a part of the body which might not be functioning ever forever so considering that threat considering that point of safety that the customer or the users of these automotives are very much comfortable and you know uh, trustworthy reliable journey when they have using your automotive devices, that safety concerns we need to take care of. Also, when you talk about the risk areas, which we generally identify, so risk needs to be mitigated as much as possible. But if in case there are things which cannot be mitigated, so you need to make sure that you try them as much as possible so that you see that that particular risk does not happen. So if there is an actual risk, he identifies suitable measures to mitigate their possible impact to an acceptable level of the risk. The methods of the execution of such analysis and summarized in the standard of the functional safety. So yes, do we, we do have someone, something called as IEC, that is 61502, which talks about the same. So IEC stands for International Electrotechnical Commission and has a standard of 61502-508, which generally talks about the international safety standards for the automotives. So I'm putting a link there in the description. If you would like to quickly recall and understand more about these standards, you can definitely refer this link from the provider. According to ISO 26262, functional safety is defined as absence of unreasonable risk due to hazard caused by the malfunction behavior of IE and E systems. Now, it's more important, the definition which is defined by the ISO 26262 is that the the safety is something which is completely eliminating all your risk, unreasonable risk with which you can have actually the malfunctions of uh, different functions. Uh, that could be due to that and uh, it may impact human lives and claim you know any kind of impact on the users. So in that sense, the term is to be differentiated from other safety terms such as, as informational safety, product safety or work safety. So these are different. This is about the human fetal right? 
it could be fatal. So we just have to make sure that we are securing that. Safety in the working environment and cybersecurity are not in focus of ISO 26262. So we will not be getting into the details of that, but it was just an introduction that there are various safety standards which uh, we, can, we have in the market and technological world, but right now we do not have that in this scope. The second thing is contribution of the tester to the safety culture. So what kind of contribution does the tester make? So within the product development, according to ISO 26262, it is not enough to monitor your organization's process. Okay, all participants need to live a process independent approach. It's just not that you are, you know, monitoring how exactly things are going. No, everyone Every single person has to be responsible or take the responsibility of defining that errorness of error free product and errorness identification at any point of time, making sure that safety is everyone's responsibility, just not one person. Everybody must understand their impact on the development process and the safety of the prior product. This includes external partners and suppliers as well. That if you are making use of a third party, third party organization to do some of your job, then you need to make sure that the third party organization or the vendor also make sure that you fulfill the same need or you stick to those standards so that you whatever they do the, is, is, is as per the standards which we want to follow. The participants... <coughs> the party must... The participants must understand that their own action do not happen independently of other processes. Each step of the development constitutes an essential contribution to the compliance with the implementation of the function safety relevant requirement. So it's just not one person, everyone, right from the development till everything happens till the end, like testing and maintenance and all, everyone takes the responsibility of the same. This responsibility does not just end with the product launch. It continues until the end of the system life cycle. So yes, of course, there are many other phases which will be taken care of the launch. So you need to make sure that you fulfill the same till the end. The tester contributes to the safety culture by participating responsibly on in all the software development lifecycle phases and by carrying out his work with continuous view of overall context of the product development. So now team, of course, we know from the foundation already that the you know tester does not wait for the codes to be ready or development to happen in order to start testing. You do have the principles of early testing and you can actually begin much earlier in the life cycle in order to start detecting the defects, start uh, identifying the anomalies, inconsistencies, or contradictions in the requirements itself. So not only requirements, any other phases as well. Whatever you do, the tester make sure that you are available at that point of time in order to find uh, as, kind, as many anomalies or defects as possible so that things can be more and more accurate. And moreover, when you talk about the safety, uh, you your one simple mistake would be claiming somebody's life so you know you need to think from that point of view in order to meet all the expectations and improve the quality of the product well so that's all from this particular episode and tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below we'll be getting back to you soon with another set of tutorials till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning